Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up different types of decals. So you can have your regular default decal where you have your normal map, your color, as you could see here. Then one that takes the normal of the thing below it. So as you could see, you could see the bricks through here. You could also set it up where you only have the normal. So that way you can get details of cracks, but the color doesn't come through. And of course you can combine the two and you can have one where you only transfer it through the roughness and the metalness of it. So you can have different variations and these are all very simple to set up. It's going to be a part one of two where next time I will also be showing you how to set up different responses to different decals as well. So let's get into it. So here we are in a brand new project. I've just gone ahead and applied two different materials to the ground plane so we can use it to see the normals of the bricks as more of a flat on the concrete for demonstration. This whole setup is very simple. This is going to be a very short video. So we start out by making a material. And of course, since it's going to be a decal, we're going to change it from surface to defer decal and set it to translucent. So I'm just going to grab the Megascans texture that I got here. Of course, you could just modify the original Megascans master material if you want to have more control and then swap them out of the parent. But I'll leave that to you if you want to go that route. But basically, for the default setup, of course, you have your base color, you have your normal, and you have your roughness and opacity. Of course, because this is the Megascans one, it comes in as displacement roughness alpha in the channels, which is why I'm taking the roughness from the green and the alpha from the blue. So here it is, right? So this is our decal, I hit apply. And if I was to now drag it in, you could see this is our normal decal. So now we have, right, the, the full setup. Now, this is good for some things. For example, you wanna make a puddle, you wanna have the normals of the puddle, then it's great. You want to have a flat water or you want to have this look specifically as it is. It's great for things like this, but sometimes you want to keep the normal information of the thing below it. So for example, if you're doing red paint or something that's like a painted on top, you want to keep like the normals of the actual brick below or whatever it is, the concrete. So to do that is very simple. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this. And then all we do is unhook the normal. So if I unhook the normal and then drag this in, you could see it is actually taking the normal information from the thing below. So if I come here, you can see there's the brick below it. The way it works is if nothing is plugged into the normal, then it will use the thing below it. You can't have, and I've tried this, I was curious, because what if I did a switch parameter and I will go ahead and just say, plug it like this it then complains that it's missing a B output and then it errors out as you can see. So it's not possible to just have a switch to have this on and off, unfortunately. If you guys know of a way to do it, please let me know in the comments below. But as far as I know, you just need to have a new parent, one just that doesn't have a normal input. So that's all it is, you unhook the normal. And in the same manner, right, if I have another one, say no color, and then I unhook the base color, and I drag it in. You can see I'm just getting the normal roughness, metalness, all that information, but I'm not getting the color. And that's great if you wanna just add normal detail to an object that already has the right colors. So something like this flat concrete and you wanna add more breakup and get that variation in, it is perfect for things like that. And of course you can do you no know, color normal, unhook the color, unhook the normal, and then you just have the roughness and metalness information effectively. So you can see, as I move this around, you can see the roughness has ch is changing. This is a very simple setup, but from what I've learned recently, not very many people know about it. So I was hoping to share this with those of you that don't. And next time we'll also be going in and showing you how to get different response types for your decals. So you can effectively use your decal as a mask to control how it, it interacts with the material itself. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.